Hello and welcome to another modern video. Today I bring to you a donation deck list from Kikan. Thank you so much uh, for the support. Uh, we're going to be playing a Yorion version of Elementals. So uh, these are, um, it's basically a combination of the two sort of similar versions of decks that we have going on today, which is like the four color Yorion mid range deck and the Elementals decks that I played a bunch. I played in the latest uh, modern showcase uh, challenge. And uh, I still think the the deck is it's a little bit different than than the the four color Yorion deck in that the the value engine is a little bit different. Like the the value engine in the Yorion deck is of course eternal witness and expressive iteration and stuff like that. Uh, the value engine in this deck list is actually based off of a recent reef. So we have access to um, a way to overpower. All of our other cards and you know cards like Mool Drifter, which are surprisingly very very good in the format right now uh, get to shine in this in this shell because you know you want to be playing a bunch of ephemerates anyway so you get to you know uh, get extra value whenever you have a recent reef in play recent reef also combos with your furies and your solitudes meaning that you get to draw a card whenever you activate them uh, whenever you you uh, evoke them sorry and of course uh, here we do have access to the eternal witness engine so the Eternal Witness engine gets stopped by Graveyard Hate, uh, which is something relevant. In fact, when I played against the uh, the Four Color Midrange deck uh, from the Elemental side, the, the normal Kahira Elementals version, I would uh, very often bring in a Rest in Peace in the matchup. So this, uh, this uh, engine does not get stopped by Graveyard Hate, but this one does. So what this means is that we are kind of like double dipping in this deck list. So uh, this could be a good idea, or it could also turn the deck into a little bit more clunky, uh, but that's what we are going to figure out today. So we have our Elementals base, of course, the Recent Reef, Omnath, Solitude, Moldrifter, and Fury. And along, alongside this, guys, we have access to Flame Clean Harbinger, which can uh, Demonic Tutor, uh, I guess Vampiric Tutor really is, is, is the, <laughs> the card that it, that it is. It's Vampiric Tutor uh, whenever you don't have a Recent Reef, and it's actual Demonic Tutor whenever you do have one. Uh, whenever I played my Elementals decks, I always liked uh, Flame Green Harbinger. I think that the card is pretty strong um, and it kind of does exactly what you want it to do, but it's not as obvious. Like it's not that you are just always trying to, you know, turn one Flame King into, into Recent Reef or something like that. Sometimes you do, uh, but very often uh, you're supposed to hold your Flame King until you can get more value from it. So it's, uh, it's, it's another tool that we have access to basically. Uh, the rest of the shell is, uh, you know, Renan Six and Fairy, uh, probably the two more, more power, most powerful planeswalkers in the current modern format. Uh, we do have access to Spreading Seas, a fantastic disruption in the current format as well. Uh, gets rid of Ursa's Saga, gets rid of Ursa's Tower, or like slows down the Tron decks, which are problematic for this style of deck. Um, and then we have removal in the form of Lightning Bolt and Prismatic Ending. Uh, the Endurance here is there as a bullet, which we can go fetch with the Harbinger as well. And then we have Ephemerate, which gets value which, with every single one of our creatures, and Abundant Growth, uh, which gets value with Yorion and helps us fix our mana. The remainder of the deck, of course, is uh, Evangel Lands. So we are a four-color deck, so we have just four copies of Cavern of Souls, and everything else is a Fetch Land or a Shock Land or four basic lands that we have access to. The sideboard includes uh, Alpine Moon against the Tron and the Saga decks, Force of Negation against Combo and stuff like that, extra copies of Endurance, there's a lot of graveyard decks running around the format right now, so having access to Endurance uh, is uh, it, it's a de definitely a great bonus. Uh, Fulminator Mage and Foundation Breaker are here as pseudo targets for Flame King Harbinger, of course, this against land-based uh, strategies and this against artifact slash enchantment-based strategies. Force of Vigor, because this card is messed up, and a couple of copies of Engineer Explosives as additional removal for the aggressive style decks. Uh, we're going to be trying this uh, list through a league. If you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you would like for me to play your uh, desired deck list, all you need to do is you need to go uh, uh, to the donation link in the description of the video below, and you can find instructions there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you for round number one. All right, here we are for round number one. Revealing our companion and we're off to the races. This hand looks pretty solid. So we can go turn one snow cover forest into abundant growth. We have good interaction with a prismatic ending eternal witness to start to get the that ball rolling and we can also go the recent reef uh, way. So 
Seems like a very, very solid opener. I'm assuming my opponent is up two over there. Okay, here we go. Another land. It's not great, not, not terrible. It's kind of whatever. Okay. Here we're going to see something a little bit awkward, which is the fact that Eternal Witness doesn't really combo well with Cavern of Souls. So if my opponent's playing a counter spell based deck, I'm, I mean, I'm going to want to play the Cavern. Um, and that is going to make things awkward for my Eternal Witness. Um, so that's weird, but... Search for tomorrow. Okay, so we're playing against some scape shift deck. It's kind of interesting. Um, I think I'm gonna go with tapped land here and say go. Um, we can go uh, recent reef next turn off of the cavern of souls. And if we find the land, that would be great. If we don't find a land, that's also fine. Um, Search for tomorrow is definitely an interesting one here. Oof, that's a big draw. That's a big, big draw. All right, so one, green, and blue. Here's my Risen Reef. Can't counter this. So... I'm gonna see what my opponent's up to over there. Maybe they're playing some BTL escape shift. Maybe they're playing like a control deck with wilderness reclamation and they're using search of search for tomorrows. It's interesting because like basic lands are not oh that's big. So now I can go next turn, I can go Omnath into fetch land, which is pretty good. Road spiral. Okay, so they're ramping hard. <laughs> they're ramping pretty hard over there. Um, if they're playing Ren and Six, that could be an issue. Because Ren and Six deals with my recent reef very effectively. Go get another basic island. Huh. Up to this point, I have no idea what my opponent's up to. I would not be surprised if they play Jace. I would not be surprised if they play uh, like a Wilderness Reclamation. I kind of have no idea what to expect. Green, blue, and white. Here's Omnath. This is nice because it actually allows me to put a significant amount of pressure. We already have a fetch line in hand, so it doesn't matter in which order I stack my triggers here. That's pretty good. So I guess I want to play that here. And the reason for playing the fairy is because next turn I could go. It's actually awkward. Like I still have to find a land for me to be able to go the fairy into. The fairy into Ewit. Hmm. So I'm gonna say no here. And this needs to get countered. But then we can, you know, start doing some eternal witness nonsense. Cryptic command. They draw two. Okay, so that probably means that they have counter spell as well. Blue and green. Huh. Well, I'm extremely surprised about that, but I'll take it. So I'm gonna plus because my opponent is not particularly close. I guess they're somewhat close, but 
I guess they could like cycle Shark Typhoon and that would allow them to um, unholy hit my Teferi. But it's definitely worth it to plus here. And it's sort of safe because we don't have to... Um, we don't have... Uh, my opponent cannot play a Shark right now. So... I think this is fine. Very surprised my opponent decided to draw two as opposed to countering this. What answers to the fairy could they have? Search for tomorrow. So I guess they they're just gonna escape shift me. Five. I mean this means that bring to light doesn't work. So it needs to be a natural escape shift. If that's what they got. But I guess it can't really be bring to life because they don't have four colors of mana, so. I am very, very intrigued. It is scape shift. Okay. So it's just like old school scape shift, like back in the day. It's kind of cool. Um. I think they have eight lands, so this probably means that I'm dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so if they uh, send all of their triggers face, I'm gonna die. I can still gain four life at instant speed, and I can gain up to seven if I uh, if I luck suck a solitude off of their uh, also off of the uh, recent reef trigger, because I can pitch the prismatic ending to the solitude, and then I can exile the solitude. Um, if I draw another one, but I mean, my my opponent still needs to send everything face, so we're gonna see what happens here. Uh, it does look like we could be dead because uh, going up to thirty, this is I think this is um, so I guess it's seven, no, it's six times two, it's twelve triggers, so thirty six points of damage. And they're sending everything face. Uh, okay. So we are dead. Huh. That's cool. I've not seen escape shift, like, you know, straight up team or escape shift in a really long time. Kelpa Moon is good. I don't think Spreading Seas is good. Uh, Force of Negation is obviously pretty solid. I like Fulminator Mage. And that's kind of about it. I don't know what to expect from them in terms of prismatic ending targets. These are good, these are good. Force of bigger. Yeah, okay. Um contrary to what it might it might seem like, uh, spreading seas is pretty bad against Scape Shift. I know that it's a it's a land-based uh, strategy. But you know, as you just saw, their their concept is to you know sack all their lands and <laughs> get get uh, get um, all of the lands from their deck. So Spreadsheet doesn't really disrupt any any of that in any reasonable way. And it, this is not like the primeval titan version, you know, that very often they just like resolve the crime time and then maybe you get just like spreading seeds their land in between uh, before they kill you. That's just not the case. That's not the way that this, this version of the deck works. They're not playing primeval titan. They're just playing control cards and just like three or four copies of scape shift to, to win the game with. So I think this is what we're going to go with and let's see how it goes. Okay. We had no disruption, but we got ways of drawing cards. Are these enough though? Probably not actually. <laughs> um, we got disruption, nothing else. <laughs> um, the cavernous also have felt pretty, pretty clunky so far, to be honest. Um, I'm not really digging the, the Cavern of Souls yet. I'm gonna keep this hand and I'm gonna bottom the Ephemerate and the Solitude. 
and I'm gonna hope to find the fetch land off the top. But uh, yeah, this this cavern assault have felt not very good. Particularly because we're we're trying to cast like a red and green spell on turn two and like a white blue spell on turn three. Like this is this is a reasonable curve. This is not something unreasonable. And Cavern of Souls makes makes this really hard to achieve. Like because we we're only playing twenty four lands that could potentially tap for these colors of mana in our eighty card deck, which is not that many. Just as is, we're playing 28, which is close to the equivalent of playing 21 lands, which is extremely low. In, in my 60 card uh, Elementals decks, I was playing uh, 24. And I was sometimes uh, struggling to hit my land drops on time because the deck is extremely mana hungry. And this deck seems even more mana hungry than the original Elementals list because you're playing Eternal Witness and stuff. So. If we find a fetch land, maybe I am going to be liking my spot. But if we don't find a fetch land, it's going to be it's going to be pretty hard for us to to be able to race my opponent. We kind of need it right now too so we can even just like getting a fetch land next turn would be too slow cuz uh, we are still if we find a fetch we still are at time of doing turn 2 rent turn 3 to fairy. Uh, opponent suspends search, and I guess if we go turn three search, we can counter this as the suspended instead for tomorrow, which would be super nice. On our multi five, we're gonna definitely need something like this, you know, something that really allows us to. Yes. Okay, so let's get let's do red white. There's an argument for there's an argument for getting a blue source there. The reason for that is if we if we draw cavern um, not cavern of souls um, force of negation maybe we want to hold up force but with the, with the set for tomorrow in suspend like there's no way that I'm holding up force right. I'm just gonna slam this to fairy. So they're holding up counter magic which. Really sucks for me. So let's do Hallowed Fountain here. Plus Ren. White, blue, and one. Can I please resolve? <laughs> please, pretty please, just growth spiral. Just growth spiral is fine. Just just cast the growth spiral. It's no no big deal. So I think I'm just going to minus with this Teferi now. Yeah, that's not counterspell mana. All right, sweet. Blue and red. Remand? Am I getting remanded here? Is it charm? Okay. <laughs> when I fired off this league, I didn't start the day by saying, you know what? I'm about to get Easter Charm. I uh, Easter Charmed in round one in the year 2021. Uh, but my opponent had other plans in mind. You gotta respect. You gotta respect the Easter, the Easter Charm gamers. Gotta respect the Easter Charm gamers. Um, ugh. It stinks. <laughs> it, it hurts getting Easter Charmed. It surely hurts. So, what are we going to do here? We don't really have a great turn ahead of us, honestly. We don't really have that much to do. Just got a bunch of lands that don't do anything. That's, that adds to, to the bunch of lands that don't do anything. Let's get a Kitria Trium plus here. Gonna put Yorion in hand and pass the turn. It's not looking good for the home team. It's not looking good for the home team. Um, what needs to happen for me to win this game? Just draw force. Another Teferi into force. 
Cryptic command my Kitria Triome. It's been a minute since I've seen a Cryptic command, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've seen Cryptic command be cast. All right. I mean, every now and then you can, you know, just grab a deck from, uh, from a couple of years ago and it may just line up well. Like if you, if everybody's trying to out mid range everybody else, which is kind of what's been happening. This this has been a brutal draw. Um, it's kind of been what's been happening lately in modern. It's just like everybody's just trying to out mid range the other person, and if you're trying to play that sort of game, then I mean you could be doing a lot better. A lot worse than Team or Skip Shift. Like this deck plays exactly into like this sort of deck plays exactly into into the Team or Skip Shift game plan. I think I'm just banning this stomping ground over here. <clears throat> Maybe I should have played Cavern there. Yeah, I should have played the Cavern, because that means that if, if I play Cavern of Element, on Elemental, then next turn if I top deck exactly Omnath, we can we can start to do some stuff. Um, well, here this doesn't really work. Good old Steve getting in there. You gotta love Steve. Castle Vantress. My opponent's list is pretty sick. I like it a lot. Prismatic ending. But that does literally nothing, so. Uh, well, here's my cavern of elemental. And here is my elemental. <laughs> this is this is what I can do. Is this good? Probably not, uh, but I'm just trying to do, do what I can here. <laughs> Probably not gonna be good enough. Die, Steve, die. Die, Steve, die. Uh, unsurprisingly, opponent <laughs> sacrificed Steve. So close. Uh, the good thing is that, I mean, at least we have a clock, right? And Ren means that this is a, this is actually just a two turn clock. So if I don't die, which seems unlikely, uh, but if I somehow don't die, my opponent is dead in two turns. So that's pretty neat. Activate Castle Vanders, I assume. They do have they do have lethal here though, if they if they have escape shift. We have not drawn particularly well. It's similar to five, right? We could technically cycle triumph into into a force. Uh oh, opponent stopping mana. That's very, very bad news for us. Oh, oh okay. All right. <laughs> also, I have not seen these cards in paper, but like this basics looks so confusing on MTGO. Like so, so confusing. All right. Um, that means Okay, so. Start there. We can protect this bad boy with ephemerate. It's another ephemerate. So I think we plus here. I mean, we could get infinite ephemerates. 
Is that something I'm interested in? <laughs> How does Femerate work with Rebound? I don't know what I'm about to find out. So we're going to ephemerate our, our duty bunch and see where we can go from there. Point next and activate castle again. Hmm. Maybe, just maybe. They whiff. Oh, they put a card on top. Yeah, putting a card on top is really bad news for us. <laughs> Out on top is very bad news. Three mana. Wish. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's what's up. Okay, so that's the spin. That's the extra spin that they're doing. So they're casting escape shift from this sideboard. Going to ephemerate in response. Actually, there's a chance I should have done this main phase. And the reason for doing it main phase is because we could have found um we could have found um Alpine Moon. Okay. Now we're gonna fetch and we're gonna ephemerate again. Well, two mana. So cool planes. Uh, ephemerate again. I mean, the two blue mana problem is that they either have a remand or a counterspell, both of which are cards that I can't beat. So even if I do find the force, turn a witness, uh, not quite. Um, so I suspect my opponent's gonna have enough lands, but you know. You always gotta make the escape shift the, the escape shift player show you that they have the, the required amount of lands. I'm gonna concede when I see the, the triggers on the stack though. Uh but yeah, this matchup seems heinous for us. <laughs> so bad. So so bad for us. Um But at the same time it's just it's not a popular deck whatsoever. Uh, but again, like it could be, it could be exploiting some hole in the meta game. If I'm, if I'm being honest, like I hadn't really thought about a deck like Scape Shift. I guess the teamwork version. I mean, right? Because uh, we do see the Bring to Light versions uh, hanging out, and those versions are kind of fine. They're okay. You see them every now and then. Uh, but sometimes, like for example, those versions really struggle against the Fairy Time Raveler because you know they're trying to maximize on ring to light and the card uh, you know the fairy kind of just blanks the card ring to light straight up so um, because of how popular the fairy is right now this version playing wish um is it's actually super interesting like it could be it could be exploiting some uh, hole in the meta game that that it's it's very interesting it's it's cool to see. It's cool to see for sure. All right, I'm gonna wait until my opponent puts the triggers on the stack, but I I really doubt they'll mess it up. I'm surprised that they kept the basic island there for whatever reason. I wonder what the reason is for not just keeping a mountain, but whatever. I'm taking a long time to resolve this escape shift. That's uh, one balakid. Soup. Or weird. Anyway, we're dead. <laughs> Here we are for the second round. Um, I'm gonna keep this hand. We really need to find a land. Um, we really need to find land. Um, this has to be amulet, right? This has to be Amulet, their main deck in a Relic, and they just happened to draw it. So I'm going to... 
I'm going to go just off of a... Uh, I need to make sure that it's something that can cast Ren if I top deck it, so I probably want to go with Temple Garden here. Yeah, let's go with Temple Garden. And this denies them a draw. So I think it's worth doing. That's a lot of noise from my neighbor. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing over there, but... They're being pretty, pretty loud. Um, but yeah, the, the amulet is really the only deck that will go turn one, turn one Ursa Saga, and be okay with it. Um, it is amulet. Okay. Okay. Now that we know that it is amulet, I am not going to blow this up. I'm going to save the other ending for a saga. This is pretty neat, though. I think I'm gonna go Flamekin off of a Steam Vents. Flamekin off Steam Vents, and we're gonna go draw Solitude. This means the next turn I'm gonna have a recent reef, uh, hold up Solitude. So we're drawing Solitude. <clears throat> I could also just Deferi Time Raveler and bounce, uh, bounce that Saga. Because it's a Vesuva, and now that this Saga is getting destroyed, then they're not going to be able to replay that Vesuva. They, I can't get Titan here, unless my opponent has another Amulet. So this is good for me. Um, I think I'm going to go to Fairy Minus. Unless... See what they do here. Yeah, they're bouncing the growth chamber. Asusa. Well, these are pretty super interesting because I I have so many options here. I have so many options because if they have multiple titans, it's better for me to minus on the Ursa Saga. Can I stop a titan from happening? I think the answer is no, because I can't answer both. I can't answer both the Saga, the Amulet and the Asusa. Surprisingly, we drew, <laughs> we drew Solitude. So, the good thing about playing the Teferi and bouncing this... So, their hand is Growth Chamber. Growth Chamber... Yeah, I'm just gonna go with Teferi and I'm gonna bounce the, the Ursa Saga. <laughs> They're going to be able to go Castle into Growth Chamber. Which is not like super great, but... This is a complicated turn. We have so many options, but the main reason for doing this is that we, if we find any other land, we're going to be able to double spell next turn. And we have two looks at a land. Any land does it. And the problem is if I if I go with the recent reef draw, with the recent reef line, sorry, we also get two looks, but the difference is that um, we are not going to, uh, like if in order to ending plus Teferi, we will need to find exactly a white source. I could go for, um, what I could have done there is just Solitude the Asusa, but I think it's important to Solitude the Primeval Titan. 
They've used two land drops. Okay. There's also the possibility that they can just, you know, go for, get another, get a summoner's pact, which would mean that we have no reason to solitude right now. Um, which means that we get to draw a card of the recent reef, and if that card happens to be an ephemerate, we're actually going to be in really good shape. So they, they they can't really, unless they have another Titan in hand, they can't really go for haste here. Because they, they know about the Solitude in hand, so they go for double Saga. It's not what I would have done, but it does make sense. Like it's one it's one of the good options that my opponent could one of the good lines that my opponent could have taken. I think that going for um T West plus bounce line would have been better. Cause that sets up the, the next turn very nicely. Um I think this allows me to tutor for more solitude, so this is worth more than the Teferi. We do have another Teferi in hand anyway. Um this can fetch stomping ground, so so let's go with this. See what we find. Another recent reef, and now we have the option of getting rid of the amulet or getting rid of the Asusa. Hmm. We don't have ephemerate. So, but we can draw the ephemerate. So, because we can draw the ephemerate, it's probably correct for me to do this right now. So now this is going to exile the prime time. We're going to see what we draw. And then I'm going to Prismatic End in the Amulet. I think it's better to Prismatic End in the Amulet than killing Bolt in the Asusa. This is a close game. It is a close game. But yeah, if, if we Prismatic End in the Amulet, then my opponent can't haste the prime time next turn. So even if they have another Titan in hand, we only know about the castle in their hand. So... Flimkin Harbinger. I'm gonna save that one for next turn. And here we're gonna go for Hallowed Fountain. It's the only on top of White Source, so we don't want we don't really have an option. Um, but next turn we're gonna be able to play. We can play second recent reef. Play second recent reef and then play um Play Flamekin and then see what we find. So they do have second prime time, but at least that prime time can't haste because we got rid of the amulet. <laughs> at least know the way that they're, they, they're tapping right now. Maybe they have Crumbling Vestige and a Bounce Land in hand. If they do have Crumbling Vestige and a Bounce Land in hand, then they could haste there, but it looks like maybe they don't. So they already had the second Titan set up. <laughs> Next time they're going to have Triple Amulet. Big X for me. Valakut T West. We know about the castle they have in hand. Now we know T West Castle. Well, now we have perfect info. So their hand is T West Castle and the Suba. Prismatic ending. Green, blue, blue. Here's a recent reef.
<laughs> so we pay for packed. If we find an untapped land, um, I'm not going to to click on it. So we make sure that we have a land that we can play this turn on tap land. And we can hold up, I guess, Lightning Bolt or yeah, I guess we could hold up Lightning Bolt for what's worth. Probably not gonna be particularly impactful, but Ephemerate is good. And this we say no. Well, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. So we play that, we fetch for basic planes. And we're gonna go Flame King Harbinger. And we're gonna stack our triggers like so. So we have the first look, we see a lightning bolt. But now we say yes to this, we find our solitude, and now we draw the solitude off of the thingy. Now we pass the turn. We see what my opponent does. We're gonna have to pay for their pact. And then if they go for the Dryad Transmute, we get him. Because we're going to be able to exile two creatures. Maybe they make some Saga tokens. They will need to make them right now. They're stopping those lands for mana, which makes sense. The way that they tap, though, they don't have access to blue. Oh, they have the, the Bounce Land Hand, never mind. A couple of amulets. Play Vesuva. We have to wait until they like play the Dryad or whatever, or maybe they play a second Titan. But I guess if they play a second Titan, they can't both haste and get the Dryad, so. Summoners backed, packed for another primeval titan. If they naturally drew the dryad or they naturally drew another prime time, we're gonna be in trouble. <clears throat> So they've used two land drops, I think. We still have one land drop remaining. They're going for haste here. So we're gonna wait until they use their mana. I guess we're just gonna wait until combat. Go for haste. Again, their life total doesn't matter. So like them gaining a couple of extra life, it's, it's irrelevant. We do have to wait until beginning of combat though. And if they do have either another Tolera West or a natural Dryad or something like that, then we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So exile that one. Spreading Seas is kind of nice. Ephemerate. There, turn a witness, land. All right, so there goes that. <laughs> Looks like we got him. Sweet. Uh, they should have gone for for uh, a transmute here. I don't know why they went for haste. It was basically free for them to do that because, like, we couldn't really deny them from paying the. The mana. Oh, they just considered the match? Okay. I was going for... <laughs> I was going for uh, for the cyber thing, but I guess that's gonna be the match. See you next round. Oh, wow. It's been a minute since I've seen this guy. Um, I mean, we can't keep this hand, so let's ship it. Another no lander, so down to five we go. Um, that's okay, I guess. So keep that. And we're gonna... Am I gonna... Am I really gonna bottom removal here? I think I'm just gonna bottom. I don't think I can bottom removal removal against the Obosh deck, right? I 
it's so rough. That we these ones we have to keep. I guess I'm gonna bottom these two. That that really hurt. I don't think I can send the land, however. Definitely going for basic forest here. I'm probably expecting Blood Moon. Ephemerate, okay. Okay, okay, okay. What are the chances that in two draw steps I find exactly the two cards that I just bottomed? Isn't that crazy? What are the chances that in an 80 card deck I have two four offs and I bottom both of them and I immediately draw them in my very first two draw steps? <laughs> That's pretty exciting. <laughs> Um, that really sucks. I really wish I could <laughs> land. Let's go. So, this steps for any color, so I'm just gonna go for a basic mountain here, which is not the best, but oh, I'm an idiot. Never mind. Uh, I should have gotten uh, maybe another red source, another green source there. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops, I wanted to, for whatever reason, I was like, oh yeah, I can cast white here, blue here. I was thinking of the fairy mana in, <laughs> instead of eternal witness mana. Uh, that was a bunt. That was a big bunt. Because if I miss my land drop here, it's going to be really hard to win this game. Blood Moon. I think I'm gonna ephemerate right now. And now I can do this. Um, my opponent's probably gonna kill this. So these are the same card, which is probably spike field, whatever. Uh, but it did seem necessary for me to try to hit my land drop there. Bone Crusher Giant. It's <laughs> pretty lucky. So we can cast Yorion now. We still cannot cast Omnath. We still cannot cast Eternal Witness. So I'm just going to pass. Although I guess a four or five flyer is kind of a big deal. Yeah, it, yeah I should I should have just played the Yori on there, I think. I was thinking that I want to blink my Fury, but there's just no need. There's just no need to do that. I should have just played the Yorion. Yeah, should have just played the Orion. Draw a card. That was bad. Also, because this, yeah, this, man, that would have been so much better. Because now I can put that on a different land. I guess on a, on a basic mountain, this plays around the Blood Moon bug. So the bug on the Blood Moon is that if my, if my opponent plays another Blood Moon, then what's going to happen is like these are going to get turned off and I'm not going to be able to tap them for for it, so, for any color. And since these are basically a mountain anyway, uh, then by putting it on the basic mountain, I'm playing around the bug. Kind of funny how <laughs> Magic Online sometimes forces you to, to do these stupid things. 
Well, that looks pretty good for this Fury. Wow, my opponent was super flooded. I actually feel like I'm pretty ahead here. Well, I think I'm blocking. My opponent can two for one themselves in order to kill this Yorion, but that's fine. Sure. Now we go Omnath. White blue. Okay. I can bolt something. We can fury something. One is really holding on to that relic progenitus. It kind of feels like they think that it's doing more work than it's actually doing. Which one am I buying here? I think I'm rebuying Omnath. Which is gonna force the relic crack, probably. So one, two, three, exile, fetch basic planes. Does that even matter? I'm truly really trying. I'm truly really trying to figure out. Like, I think I can play through this Bloodman fairly easily. It's more of a matter of I kind of want to get rid of this. So abundant growth. There. Interesting. So let's go green, green, and one, I guess. So this is going to force the pop. Too bad that I couldn't wait until I had white, but there's no way up one doesn't pop here, yeah. <clears throat> Take two. My body is ready to take two. <clears throat> okay. So. We can just clear the board. We could do it right now to play around removal. Nice card. <laughs> An evolve average card, like I would call it. I would call it. So now they can play Avosh, and I'll just Fury. That is so good. Holy crap. That's really good. And they have the monkey. Wow. Okay, maybe we're in trouble here. Maybe we're actually in trouble here. 
<laughs> they can't cast it because the, the rebound would go onto the stack for me. Yeah, that's that's just so wrong. Wait, that's not how that works. Yeah, that can't go. That can go exiled for them. Huh. I don't know how that works actually. Um, one, two, three, four. Literal no idea how that works. So this is going to be a forced chump here if my opponent plays Sobosh. I really got to find a Solitude or something. Jeez. Oh, Third Fury? That's a lot. That really is a lot. Yeah, I'm about to die here. My move to five was not enough. My move to five was not enough. Um, it was that turn where I what I didn't play the Yorion was just like such a bad mistake, and such a punishing one too. And I just don't have the mana to do to do enough stuff. I could play another Omnath and. Then I just die. So we go get Solitude. And now we hard cast Moon Drifter. Technically not dead here. I can try with the monkey exile a chump of fury and then um, use solitude. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. but it gives me a shot at least. We're gonna have to draw another Solitude, I guess. There's also the fact that, you know, I just died to like bolts and random nonsense. <laughs> uh, I guess we're winning on clock. <laughs> that's <laughs> we're winning on clock. That's the, that's the angle that we got. The third Fury was very good. The third Fury was very, very good for them. And the Blood Moon did work in the end. The Blood Moon certainly did work. Doesn't matter which one blocks where. Forced play. Kind of need to find another solitude, I guess. Blue, green, white, red. Okay, game four. Play this. Uh, 
Is Fury better than Solitude? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because I have second rain, I think Fury is actually better than Solitude. Because Fury trades with the other Fury. Pass the turn. So we're probably gonna got a double jump here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we can Fury, kill a Bosch, and then we can trade Fury for Fury. I could go to two, but that, that means that I'm just dead to like another spike field hazard or something like that. So that doesn't sound great for me. See some pyro tokens. Okay. Relic. Okay. Exile Relic. Okay. Yeah, I know that I'm drawing I know that I'm drawing the solitude, so the the fury, sorry, so So I'm I know that I'm not gonna get any value from the Somnath. Play land. And now two, three, four, five. Or there and the ping. I'm trying to think if I should use the ending or the second ren. Like I, I'm dead to lightning bolt. I can't beat lightning bolt because they just bolt me in. I guess I go to one. But I'm thinking that. I think I have to do this. Because it's also possible that they have Soul Scar Mage. And if they have Soul Scar, then that's a problem. Because Ren doesn't kill Soul Scar. Ren does kill the tokens, however. So that's why I was considering playing Ren there. Jeez, what a grind. Fury's trade, go down to seven. Let's see what else my opponent's got. Nothing, okay. We're gonna hold on to that one in case we find another Omnath. Unfortunately, I don't think this, this friend is doing too much. Relic. I wonder if just playing four Mandic Relics. Four Mandic Relics, four Mandic Bloodmans. Spreading Seas. It's pretty nice. So, target that. This gives me an extra blue source, which is nice. Okay. Recent Reef. Okay. Now we got a blocker, I guess. Something that blocks monkey. We're, we only have one ephemerate left. <laughs> the last basic. I guess if they do have monkey, I am supposed to block. So maybe this attack is bad. But I think if they had monkey, they would have played it last turn, unless they like literally top deck it right now. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's quite strong. That 
It's quite strong. Prismatic ending would be nice. That's not so nice. I'm gonna take the, the two damage here, I think. We do have some good draws. We have two Furies remaining. We have three Solitudes, one Omnath. There are a bunch of cards that don't do anything, like Eternal Witness. Bold face, bold face. Okay, we're dead. Mm -hmm. It's not surprising. Yeah, that would have been pretty good. It's not surprising that we got, you know, outdrawn in the in the very late game by the deck that is playing less cards. Um, so four seems okay. I guess Foundation Breaker is better than fours. And do I like endurance? I, de I definitely do like ex eh, do I like explosives? Explosives is kind of medium. The fairy is pretty poor, I think. Don't think I want forces. Explosives could be okay. I think the fairy is just medium. Ren is also not great. Maybe a random 3-4. I guess Endurance just lines up super well against what they're doing. So the name of the game here is Play Around Blood Moon. And keep your life total high. That's the strategy. That's the strat we're going for. Let's see if we can do it. All right, here we go. Yep, keep this one. Turn one abundant growth, so busted. <laughs> People talk about broken starts. This is what they're talking about. Turn one abundant growth, go. How are people supposed to beat that, you know? Turn one basic mountain. That's also the start of dreams. Okay, name elemental here. So they 500% at this point, I would say. 500% have Blood Moon on turn three. Maybe that means I should have. That probably means I should have. Um, I should have played explosives on three that turn. Here comes the moon. Yeah, that's an interesting thought, actually. I didn't think about it at the time, but if I play explosives on three there, their blunder just doesn't do anything. I may have punted this game away. I also allow them to use their mana efficiently. The good thing is that, well, if they play the Bone Crusher, now they're more likely to play into my if i find a basic or another abundant growth they're more likely to play into my explosives um just gonna pull that thing just so i don't go to discard Spreading seas. Pretty good actually. It gives me a blue source, and that's a white source. That's so huge. One, two, three. There's money ending there. That's a big game. Maybe we're in this. Mm. 
I'm actually just feeling kind of fine right now. Google is printing Seize My Own Land. <laughs> That's the tech. That is the tech. Google is printing Seize Your Own Land. Pillage, my basic. Jeesh. Okay. Uh, oof. Well, we, we do have to do this, right? We have to go for Omneth here so we can double spell. Play fetch. Snow covered island. And now we're just going to play Yorion. Playing both of these. And I'm going to. Again, because of the bug, I guess I have to learn on the bug. So I'm going to put this on the den of the bugbear. I mean, we're fairly ahead on board at this point, so there's also that. But if they have another Blood Moon, that could potentially be a problem. We don't have answer to another Blood Moon. Or Bosch. There we go. Feels good. Two for two. Gut shot? <laughs> Do we have any gut shots going on over there, opponent? Mmm. -mm. Hell yeah. Pillage. Pillage? That's a card I have to worry, apparently. <laughs> That's a card I have to worry about, apparently, huh? Pillage is not a card that I was thinking about. So they're super on the Blood Moon plan, then. They're super, super on the Blood Moon plan. And did they just cut all their one drops? Ah, <sighs> yikes, that sucks. Um, This really sucks. Because now I'm going to get Blood Mooned. And <laughs> so now Blood Moon fixes my mana, which is hilarious. Oh, no land. Well, that's a lot more interesting for me. Um, let's go Ewit so we guarantee that we hit our land drop. whatever no third land let's go recent reef here We don't go to this card, draw a card, pass the turn. We can fix our mana. 
Nice. Good. Kitria Triumph here, not Rogrin. Red, green, Ren, plus play this. Mountain, Evoke. Draw a gazillion cards. Classic Ancestral. Classic Ancestral. <clears throat> Am I just pitching it with here? No, because I guess I can very easily cast it, so I'm going to pitch a land. And I guess a more Drifter? And Genie Explosives. So now they can Blood Moon me if they want to. They are encouraged to Blood Moon me. Oh yes. How could I ever beat that? Blood Moon makes my land enter untapped without taking damage. Hot. <clears throat> we'll have to find an Omnath because the Omnath is just going to allow me to turn the corner a lot quicker. It seems very unlikely for, for my opponent to be able to, to get out of this. I'm just occurring too much of an advantage, I think. I wonder why they're playing slowly. Their 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 pace of play has been slowing down in this last game, which I find interesting. I wonder what they're thinking about, like. I really wonder if there's anything they can do. <laughs> because it doesn't look like there's anything they can do. Oh, that's what they were thinking about. Okay, 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 okay. So they're thinking whether they want to kill my Ren or they want to kill my Risen Reef. Okay, so that, that actually explains it. So Sacred Foundry, play that. We're gonna do Prismatic End in the Blood Moon, white. One and this and green. And now we're just going to evoke more drifter. Not great. Not great if I'm being honest. I'm not drawing too hot. I fell away from the den. Bone crusher. B -b Bone crusher. That into play. Um, Fury. Can kill this in response, but whatever. Recent Reef. Okay. 
green, blue, green, white. That's the turn. Okay, I think we probably got enough here. Unless they can kill me for 13 this turn. From 13, sorry. Not too worried about that one. Not too worried about that one. That's pretty good. I mean, that's as good as it can get there, really. I wonder if they... Yeah, they're still Ren survives. <laughs> A Ren hanging strong. One, two, three. Ending. Foothills. Fetch for an island. Uh, green, green, blue. Oh, I kind of want to e-wit for prismatic ending. In case my opponent has another blood moon. They just conceive. All right, sweet. We got there. Long grind, but All right, here we go. Um... Big yikes with this hand. Big yikes. Um, so we can't really cast any spell. So I'm going to ship it. This seems better. A little bit clunky, but this seems better. I think I'm going to bottom the Lightning Bolt. I guess I'm going to bottom the Ephemerate. No, I should have bottom the Bolt. We're playing against a Yorion deck, so... We're gonna do this and say go. Clock is gonna be important in this match, so I'm gonna try to play as quickly as I can. If my opponent has to turn to Ren, that's gonna be a big problem. They have turned to a Ren. Unless I find an ending off the top, I don't know if we're gonna be able to beat this. Not bad. I could go play Flame King, fetch for a Reef, and then that means that I get to bolt the rain, but if my opponent has an, has an internal witness, that's a disaster, because I shuffle the top card of my deck. I mean, I, I guess I can just hedge by doing this, which telegraphs the rain, which, tele which telegraphs the bolt very, very loudly. So now we get to bolt the Ren and six, which is what I want, what, what I want to do. Wall of losses. Get some F6 value there. That's fine. We're going to draw a recent reef. Recent Reef finds. I guess we find Hollow Font and then we play Recent Reef. Maybe they have Bold. Hollowed Fountain. Blue, green, this. Okay. Okay. So our, our grindy elements are in place. 
our grindy elements are starting to be in place. We kind of have to dodge opposing eternal witness. Because the opposing eternal witness is awful for us. <laughs> really, really bad. This card, I don't think it's very good in this strategy. I have not been impressed by it. El Adam Risk. Oh, okay, so they're not playing, they're just playing like Kiki Gord. Okay, that's interesting. So they, they may be playing Omnath, but just like only slightly splashing for Omnath. Solitude. Okay. One, two, three. And I can find another Harbinger or Bolt here, so that's why I'm mental. Put that into play as well. Pass the turn. So they can hark a solitude to get rid of one of these. And then we can hardcast Fury. Kill the solitude. Man, this is gonna be this is gonna be a grindy one. This is gonna be a long match. This is gonna be a really long match. So many exchanges. Um I wonder if if I should be worrying about I wonder if I should be worrying about um, where's my ending? That's very nice. Um, so we fury pitch Ren. No, we fury pitch bolt. And if we find any untapped land. Uh, we didn't find it. That sucks. Um, I could ending this brawl. Try to mess with their mana a little bit. I mean, I don't think ending's getting that much better. So. So next turn we can go Ren, get back fetch, which is nice. I wonder if I should be worrying about Magus. Because my opponent's fetching basics over there. Fury, Solitude. Okay, that's a lot better than it could have been. <laughs> yep. Um, so, Ren. Plus on Fetch, Omnath, White, Blue, Red, Green. Play fetch land. Fetch for this. Turn a witness. I think we're going to eat with bolt. All the solitude. Same number two. <laughs> Bing, yeah. So my opponent can play Yorion, but then I go Ewit, get back Flame King, Flame King for Solitude. Hardcast Solitude, that's the third Solitude. It's 
pretty good draw. It's a pretty good draw. So let's start here, see what we find. Not bad, not bad. One, two, three, four, five. Ephemerate is good, plus on wins of Heath. Swing. So next turn we can Soul Herder. Ha ha ha. Wonder if they're going to put urine to hand right now. They didn't. They don't put urine in hand. What the hell does that mean? Well, I'm starting with attacking with everything, I think. I guess I'm just stacking with this. Because if they have like another exile effect, I do get caught here. Just come see. All right, sweet. All right, so. <laughs> what do we want to cyber in this matchup? Um, I don't think we want forces. Maybe explosives? Eh, they're playing Utopius Brawl, so spreading this is not the worst. I guess I'd rather have Foundation Breaker, which allows me to blow up a Blood Moon, which I might want to maybe play, maybe not. I don't think I want Endurances, I don't think I want Forces of any kind. I think this is what I'm going to go with. Yeah. Alright, two lander. I think we leave dangerously. We leave dangerously. Opponent moves to six. We're really going to have to hit some land drops here. Easy. Easy game. So I guess I could get Blood Moon here. So I'm going to prepare for that with this. So, fetch for basic forest. That there. Harbinger. I think we want to wait on that one. And if they go for call for mags, well, I guess they, they don't have blood moon because of how they're fetching. I'm slamming this recent reef. Slamming it. They could bolt. They could do a million things here, but I don't think I can. I don't think that the play is to wait until next turn, right? Sure. Basic mountain, white, green, blue, omnath, elemental. I'm gonna go find recent reef here. Get that party started. Yep. Game's over. Sweet. I guess the game was not as long as I was expecting. <laughs> See you next round. Wow, back-to-back Yorian -back matchups. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. Again, hoping to find the land. Um, I think this player is known for playing Kiki Cord, which could be... It's possible that they have an edge over us, 
because they have access to a kill you out of nowhere combo. Also, I am fairly sure that, oh, that's dying. I am fairly certain that um, this player does play some number of blood moves. So I'm going to go basic planes here, ending that. Hopefully that slows them down a little bit. I could also just not play around Blood Moon. Oh wow, the one lander. A triumph here, basic island over here, actually basic forest, blue on green, recent reef, next turn we can ephemerate, oh we're blowing that up, I've actually found I've had this kind of style of thing happen a couple of times. Um, yep, um, this is not a land. A lot of people are building their decks uh, like this style of deck, and they're they're playing like twenty seven lands, which is very low, uh, including this deck list. Like we're playing twenty eight. Like that's a really really low amount of, of lands. Like for for a deck that is this mana hungry, but some people are playing even less lands, and they're playing uh, Utopia's Pearls and stuff like that. And they they're counting them as mana sources, but they're, they're sometimes they're not. <laughs> sometimes they are not mana sources because your opponent can interact with them a lot easier. Um, how do we side with heal this time? Um, I think these are the cards that I brought in, and then I got some number of springsies. I think I'm just gonna cut the spring seeds. I know that my opponent just had a, you know, they had a sprawl draw there, but they're not always gonna have a sprawl draw. And they may be a little bit more careful <laughs> about their their sprawl draws after what just happened. Uh, well, this hand we have to ship, unfortunately. Uh, this hand we can keep. So keep that. I think I'm sending the breeding pool. Yes, the breeding pool. Monkey. Yeah, I don't think I can two for one myself here. So monkey's gonna have to. We're gonna take a hit. I'm gonna ending it net next turn, but. Ugh. That's good, that's really good. Huh, can they? If I play Yorion, you own. Yeah, so I guess I can blink their abundant growth with Yorion. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, I probably have to kill the Ren as opposed to the monkey now. Um, I could kill both. I think I need to get more value from my cards. I think I have to get more value from my cards. I'm just gonna go with this next turn. Maybe I get a two for one, a two for two with this fury. It's gonna cost me my omnath, but <sighs> I hate this stupid monkey. Okay. Can you please play something that I can blow up? Okay. So if I find recent reef here, we're in this. 
not bad. Okay. Also miss land drop. So I kinda want a foundation breaker that you top is pro. So let's go this. We're gonna kill here, here, and here. One has got a one one. Gonna play this. We're gonna evoke foundation breaker. And we continue the trend of trying to convince my opponent to not count Utopus Pro as a land in their deck list. <laughs> oh, come on. That's not fair. That's just not fair. I don't think we can afford to to take the turn off to kill the Rand. Like, I really wish I, I could, but I think we just have to go for Omnath here. So my opponent's going to be hitting some land drops now. They have Dispute. Disgusting. All right, so we're going to lose this game. <sighs> wow. Uh, the second run and six did it. My opponent's deck list is pretty interesting. I guess they're going to, they're going a little bit heavier on the splash than I thought they would. They're going a bit heavier on the splash than I thought they were. Oh, I think this is fine sideboarding. Just got to draw better. This Cavernous Souls have kind of been getting me. I think I want more fetch lands. I think I want more more fetch lands. We have six, 12 fetch lands. So I would like 11 fetch lands in a 60 card deck. So maybe I want 14 or 15 in, in this kind of deck. I'm talking about like um, an elementals deck. A little elemental style deck. Uh, and this is why, like, we cannot afford to to have this amount of hands that we're shipping back because we don't have lands. Um, I guess we're just gonna take things easy here. And I hope that my opponents have turn one monkey again. That really sucks. Ho ho ho, never mind. So we're gonna do basic forest. And I guess we're gonna do red white. Kill ya. That's a good top deck. Above average is how I would describe that top deck. It's an above average top deck. So, name elemental here, and we're gonna put the urine in hand. The fairy would be kind of annoying, actually. Deputy of detention. That's fine. It's kind of fine. So, do I fetch land? Fetch for basic planes. Oak, more drifter. Draw cards. Solitude, pitch, prismatic ending. Kill that. Get back my Ren. Plus Ren. Your go. I only did that really because I was going to discard. If I wasn't going to discard, I probably wouldn't have done that. 
because the solid is just worth way more. Opponent has seen enough. Opponent has seen enough. All right, here we are for the wrap up. Um, deck looked solid. Did look definitely solid. It just kind of feels like you can do whatever you want with this, with this style of deck. It's like we're just having a slightly different approach, but in reality, it's kind of like the same strategy. Um, I don't know how like the, the, the caverns felt kind of awkward. I feel like I would like maybe one more land, maybe two more lands. And um, the caverns looked sort of awkward um, sometimes because, you know, our mana requirements are fairly steep. Uh, but uh, it looks fine. Like th this, this sort of deck just looks fine. Um, I wonder if we want maybe one more basic forest in this deck list specifically because we have the Ewits that we would like to cast under Blood Moons and stuff. And Blood Moon is a moderately popular card right now. Uh, I think Spreading Seas are important. So I do like having access to some copies in the main deck. Maybe we could have the fourth copy, the Cyber. I could definitely see that as being a thing. Uh, the full minute range may be a little bit too cute. Like I understand the point of you know you have Flame King Harbinger and then you just tutor for your fulminator. But if you're doing that against Tron, like are you really winning? <laughs> is is that really something that you want to be doing, uh, or is that just gonna be too slow anyway and you're just you're just dead? Um, so it kind of it, it's 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 an idea. Like it's a cute idea, but I don't think it actually will work out most of the time. Um, the rest of the deck list looks pretty clean. I do like, as I was saying, I do like the Eternal Witnesses. Maybe you don't need to play the full four copies, maybe you can play three, and that's how you make room for a couple more extra fetch lands. I do want like one or two more fetch lands though, for sure. And maybe in place of some of these caverns, maybe we can play only three caverns and just cut maybe the fourth witness or like the Endurance in the main deck and have access to a couple more caverns. Um, so that's another another thing to consider. But the deck looked the deck looked fun. The deck looked fun. It looked like a good time. And uh, once it get once it gets going, it's it's super explosive. Like this, uh, the whole recent Reef Mold Drifter is just more explosive than the normal uh, the normal things, right? Like the normal um, expressive iteration deck lists. The expressive iteration deck lists have like a better curve, I guess. Um, so they have that going on for them. So maybe that's why it's maybe a little bit better to cut lands in that deck list as opposed to this one. Like in this one, you maybe want to go up to 29 or 30 lands um, because you just cannot afford to not hit land or number three on time. Like you just have to get there. Like it just doesn't matter anything else that you're doing. If you're not hitting land of number three on land of number three on turn three, you're, you're just, your, your win percentage just goes down so drastically from there. So um, it's a cool idea. It's definitely a cool idea and worth exploring uh, further as well. Uh, we actually did not cast Yorion as much as I usually cast um, Kahira in the Elementals deck list, so that's also something to keep into account. Uh, but this deck does have a little bit of... I, mean, I guess it's not really that much extra interaction. We have, like, from my normal deck list, we have, like, three Rens and one Lightning Bolt more. Uh, but the Abundant Growths were nice. I did like the Abundant Growths. Um... All right, that's going to be it for, for me. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy the content. Bye-bye.